The sun is doing something very weird. Not today, it's kind of misty. But if you place a camera on a motorized tripod within the Arctic Circle where a 24 hour sun lits the sky during the summer, and you make that camera rotate once per day, meaning 360 degrees per 24 hours, the path that the sun describes in your view is that of a pointy circle or an upside down egg or a droplet. I guess that just like me. Most people expect the sun to just go up and down. I've seen that every day, but more along, you know, a straight line or even a symmetrical oval. But this skewed shape, it looks weird. And to be honest, right now, I don't really understand why it is doing that. I didn't discover the egg shape phenomenon myself. Credits go to Wernant, who made a YouTube video about it in favor of a flat earth. Now, I don't agree with any of his conclusions, but he seems like a nice guy and also he's good at math and geometry, so I have respect for him. Wernant, he suggests that this egg shape pattern is kind of impossible on a globe and he argues that on a flat earth it makes way more sense. If the sun describes a circle around the North Pole, which on a flat earth is at the center of the disk and the observer is not on the North Pole, but still within the Arctic Circle. There is a moment where the sun is closer to you, thus moving faster through your view, and 12 hours later it's furthest away and it's moving kind of slow, right? But since the sun is going actually at a constant speed over the Earth, and since the camera is rotating at a constant speed, we might expect this egg shape or droplet shape path in our camera. Or do we? There's only one way that I can actually make sense of this, and that's of course by making a 3D model to check if it fits. It doesn't fit. Who am I kidding? The Earth isn't flat, and most observations done on this planet contradict this fantasy idea. Right off the bat, we see that the Sun here increases and decreases in angular sizes, something nobody has ever measured, and this makes Flat Earth instantly less plausible. Also, we notice that the Sun doesn't even come close to the horizon, but look, at a latitude of 77 degrees north in Spitsbergen, the sun almost touches the horizon before climbing up again. It's this location, by the way, that I used in my model. Polish Polar Station in Hornsen Fjord. So I started with the Gleason's map, the Flat Earther's favorite choice of globe projection, and gave the equator a radius of 6,371 kilometers, just to at least, you know, have one thing accurate. And then I placed the camera 920 kilometers from the North Pole and rotated the map, so it also matches our longitude. Sadly, the map seems to not be as accurate as I thought. It's not a perfect equidistant azimuthal polar projection, but it doesn't make that much of a difference anyways. Next up is a sum, in this case 3000 kilometers above the flat Earth. According to time and date, and thus also to Flat Earth Dave's app, because he uses the same globe data, the Sun describes a subsolar circle over the 13th degree north latitude for the day of observation. Oh, by the way, before you give Dave some money for his grift, a broken clock is still twice as accurate as his app, just saying. Oh, and before you go scream that we don't actually know exactly how high the Sun is above our flat plane, here are nine predictions with heights ranking from 1000 to 9000 kilometers all playing at once. So, if it doesn't work on a flat earth, does it actually work on a globe? The movements here are a bit more complex, but for simplicity, let's reduce the earth's size to zero and focus only on the orientation of the camera, since that's what matters here. There is no substantial parallax 12 hours apart to worry about. Let's start with a camera and make it rotate 360 degrees. Then we place that onto a circle which represents our horizon and glue the camera to it. I can now tilt this horizon to match a 77 degrees north. The camera is still doing its thing. For the rotation of the earth we add a 3 axes, glue everything to it and animate it rotating 360 degrees around the z-axis. And finally we add a sun and move it in position. It's not important how far away this is, since we only reorient the camera and we don't replace it, so again, no parallax. Our scene needs another tilt, this time we match this with the subsolar point, and as we checked before, it's 13 degrees north. Hey, by the way, it's not a coincidence that this, together with the 77 degrees uh, from our latitude, adds up to a right angle of 90 degrees. That's why the sun appears exactly at the horizon. 
So now let's press play, shall we? As it turns out, the Globe predictions described a nice upside down drop as we can see in the footage. This is a result of the combination between the two separate axes of rotation. By the way, this reminds me of the star rotations we see during night flights I covered earlier in a video. It's just math, actually, and although it is more complex than most people will understand, here is a Python code that does the calculations, and here is the output in an Excel sheet, and here is a diagram for all the nerds out there. If we do this, by the way, for a 66 degree latitude, which is the Arctic Circle itself, in the southernmost part where you can see the Arctic 24 hour sun, this droplet becomes wider. And that's because the angle between the two axes of rotation becomes bigger. On the other hand, on the North Pole, we don't expect any pattern at all. The camera's rotation and the Earth's rotation there simply cancel out one another. I spoke to Wernand extensively, and over the past couple of weeks I convinced him that he was wrong in assuming the globe predicts an oval shape. We went back and forth and he was pretty enthusiastic about the work that we've done. He also gave me this beautiful quote. However, there is something that, according to him, still is very strange. Let me show you. On the 5th of November this year, he tracked the position of the sun on a sundial from 6 a.m. in the morning to 12 o'clock midday. He meticulously documented the azimuth for every 15 minutes, showing both the shadow of the central pole and his watch. Thumbs up for this method. And while his 12 o'clock reading gave a nice direction due north, his 6 a.m. reading was off by about 12 or 13 degrees. And this is kind of problematic, right? So I asked for his location and went on SunCalc to check what the glow predictions actually were. And I noticed that at 12 o'clock the sun wasn't yet exactly in the north. In fact, it was 12.69 degrees more to the east. So I looked at all his readings from 6 to 12 o'clock and compared it with the suncock predictions and what I noticed was that all the readings were off by the same amount. Almost as if the globe earth predictions were accurate but Venon simply misaligned his sundial with north by 12 and a half degrees. If we plot this in a diagram you can see that the predictions and the readings follow the exact same path but are offset by the same amount. I shared this information with Wernand, but he doesn't seem to be convinced by it. He is sure that he set up his sundial correctly. But on the other hand, he is willing to perform more testings and learn more about the topic at hand. And that, my fellow apes, is definitely something to applaud and support. Speaking about support, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go. There's more. Wernand and I were deep in a conversation about this. And in fact, he asked me to model a problem with his sundial. He wants me to check if uh, SunCalc is actually doing something accurate and giving accurate predictions. So to create this model, let's start with a sphere. And I'm just going to give it a radius of 1. That's nice. And, and increase uh, the segments here a bit. Give it a nice texture. And we're going to place the sun at infinite distance. So the scale of the Earth doesn't really matter. Next up, we are going to add a, a sundial first on top of the North Pole and then add a central pole there that is going to create our shadow. And then these two objects we are going to copy because I want to place one here um, at the location in South Africa. So this is the super solar point, meaning the uh, point where people have to look straight up to see the sun while Renant was in South Africa at 6 o'clock in the morning, the 5th of November. What we then do next is uh, grab this entire thing, tilt it 23.4 degrees, and then uh, add a sun. The sun will be just aligned with our XY plane here uh, along the X axis, I guess. What we do is uh, both rotate the Earth around its own axis and rotate this 20.3 degrees tilt so that the super solar point is aligned here perfectly in the center of our screen. That means that it is indeed pointing right at the sun. Now we need to animate the rotation of the Earth. So we make an animation that has a duration of 24 times 60 frames. At the start of our animation, we are here at the starting point uh, that we just aligned. At the end, we go 361 degrees. So this is a sidereal day and the Earth actually rotates 361 degrees per 24 hours. And we need to do that because we are going to replace the sun too, just 
to be more precise, right? After one day, the sun has moved about one degree. Now we can zoom in on our sundial and actually track the shadow here. And if everything goes well, and I do hope so, because I'm just recording this prior to building the entire model. And so if everything goes well, my results here will match kind of the predictions that SunCalc is making. I hope so. This has been fun. Again, take care and be very nice to one another. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Wait, 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 don't go, there's more. Now the cool thing about Wernant, in my opinion, is that he doesn't agree with most of Flat Earthers. He thinks that this flat disk with the sun circling around is ridiculous. And he suggests that it's actually more about, you know, reflections of light sources off of the Van Allen belt or something. Every person on Earth gets a different reflection and therefore it kind of matches with um, with the globe predictions, I guess. And then he starts sharing these two suns probably uh, reflections or, or you can see the original sun and you can see the, the reflection of the sun and um but hey have a look at this this is my sun perfectly nice and if i do this what you can see is that i have three suns right where's my finger over here so we have hey wait a second so what you can see is we have the sun and we have a second sun and a third sun and we even have this double reflection here. That is of course proof that there are two suns but if I remove, let me take this one out, I only have one anymore. So I don't think that this is actually about reflections off of something in the sky. I think it has something to do with my camera here. So if you want to see more just subscribe because I'm working on a big project and you definitely don't want to miss that. Until then, see ya. Bye-bye.